Apple wasn't always the tech giant that we know today. It started in a tiny garage where three guys armed with little more than vision and determination built something that would change the world. From the first personal computers to the revolutionary iPhone, Apple has shaped the way we live, work, and communicate. But how did a struggling company in the 90s rise to become a multi-billion dollar global powerhouse? Okay, so Apple's journey began in 1976 in a modest garage in Cupertino, California. Three men, Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne came together with a shared vision but probably didn't realize just how much they were about to reshape the future of technology. It all kicked off with the Apple I, a personal computer that at the time was revolutionary. Computers back then were enormous machines, reserved for businesses or tech enthusiasts. But the Apple I made it possible for people to think about having one in their homes. The real breakthrough, though, came with the Apple II. This was the product that got people's attention. Unlike its predecessor, the Apple II was colorful and user-friendly, making it appealing to a much wider audience. Suddenly, schools and individuals were buying these machines, and Apple started becoming a familiar name across households. The Apple II made computing accessible in a way that had never been seen or done before. In 1984, Apple did something bold that grabbed everybody's attention. They launched the Macintosh in a way that nobody had seen before, with a Super Bowl ad that instantly became legendary. Directed by Ridley Scott, the ad had this futuristic, almost dystopian vibe with the message that 1984 won't be like 1984, referencing George Orwell's famous novel. The ad was so powerful that it's still talked about today. It was Apple's way of saying that they were here to shake things up and challenge the status quo, specifically targeting IBM, which was dominating the computer industry at the time. The Macintosh itself was revolutionary. It wasn't just another computer. It introduced the world to a whole new way of interacting with technology. Before the Mac, computers were mostly controlled through typed commands. But the Macintosh came with a graphical user interface, or a GUI, which meant people could interact with their computers by clicking on icons and menus using a mouse. That might sound kind of like a no-brainer now, but back then it was completely groundbreaking. Imagine seeing a computer with windows, icons, and a point-and-click mouse for the first time. It must have felt like a glimpse into the future. Apple was positioning the Macintosh as a direct challenge to IBM, the giant in the computer world at the time. While IBM's machines were powerful, they were seen as clunky and difficult to use for the average person. The Macintosh was sleek user-friendly with its different operating system and approachable, making computing accessible to a wider audience. It was like Apple was telling people, you don't have to be a tech expert to use a computer anymore. The 1990s were a tough time for Apple and things started to go downhill. After the huge success of the Macintosh in the 1980s, you'd think that Apple would have had a smooth ride ahead, but that wasn't the case. One of the biggest problems they faced was the rise of Microsoft. While Apple was trying to innovate, Microsoft was rapidly growing and taking over the market with its Windows operating system. Windows was cheaper and more widely available, and it ran on a lot of different types of computers, which made it tough for Apple to compete with. It was around this time that Apple seemed to be struggling to keep up. There weren't any groundbreaking new products and innovation slowed down. It felt like the company had lost its creative spark, which was a big problem in an industry where staying ahead of the curve is everything. To make matters worse, Steve Jobs, who was the driving force behind Apple's early success, left the company in 1985 after a power struggle with the board. His departure left a massive hole in the company, not just in terms of leadership, but also in its vision. Without Jobs at the helm, Apple seemed to drift. The products they released in the 90s just didn't hit the mark. Machines like the Newton and the Macintosh clones failed to capture the public's attention, and people started to wonder if Apple was losing its identity. They were no longer the innovative, cutting-edge company that had once changed the world with the Macintosh. Well, by the time Steve Jobs returned to Apple in 1997, the company was in serious trouble. It had been years of declining sales, poor product launches, and no clear direction. When Jobs came back, it wasn't just a typical corporate shakeup. It was more like a rescue mission. He didn't waste any time getting to work, and one of the first major products under his leadership was the iMac, 
which launched in 1998. The iMac was unlike any other computer on the market. It came in bright colors, had a sleek all-in-one design, and was incredibly user-friendly. Honestly, it was a breath of fresh air in an industry where most computers were dull and uninspiring. The iMac was more than just a good product. It was a statement that Apple was back and it wasn't going to settle for being just another tech company. The iMac revitalized the brand and brought Apple back into the spotlight, showing the world that they could still innovate and create products that people wanted. But Jobs wasn't done. In 2001, Apple launched the iPod, and this was the real game changer. The iPod wasn't just a cool gadget for listening to music. It marked Apple's shift into the music and lifestyle market. The idea of carrying thousands of songs in your pocket was revolutionary, and it completely transformed how people consumed music. Suddenly, Apple wasn't just about computers anymore. It was about creating products that fit seamlessly into people's everyday lives. Oh, 2007, that first iPhone was introduced. This wasn't just another product launch, it was a revolution. Before the iPhone, most phones were basic devices for calling and texting. Who remembers hitting the number one three times for the letter C, right? Some of them may have had incredibly rudimentary basic cameras and even some simple games. Me, personally, I kinda miss Brick Attack. Well, here comes Apple and completely changed the game. The iPhone combined a phone, an iPod, and an internet device all in one sleek touchscreen device. It was something that we hadn't seen before, and it quickly became a cultural phenomenon. People were lining up to get their hands on it, and it felt like everybody wanted to be a part of this new wave of technology. What made the iPhone so special was how easy and intuitive it was to use. There were no confusing buttons, just a simple, beautiful touchscreen where everything was a tap or swipe away. The design was stunning for the time, but the real magic was in how it changed the way we interacted with technology. Suddenly, we had the whole internet in our pocket, along with music, photos, and more. It made technology feel personal and portable in a way that it never had before. But perhaps the biggest shift the iPhone brought was the creation of the App Store in 2008. This is where the app economy was born. Developers around the world could now create apps for the iPhone, and users could download them with ease. From games to social media to productivity tools, apps turned the iPhone into much more than a phone. It became a personalized hub for everything. The App Store made the iPhone a versatile tool that could be tailored to fit each user's life. Apple today is a far cry from its humble beginnings in that Cupertino garage. It's now a global giant valued at over $2 trillion, and it continues to dominate the tech industry in ways that go far beyond just computers and phones. Since the success of the iPhone, Apple has expanded its product lines with groundbreaking devices like the iPad, which redefined what a tablet could be, and the Apple Watch, which turned wearables into a mainstream must-have. The company hasn't just stopped at hardware, though. Apple has built an entire ecosystem around its products with services like iCloud, which lets users seamlessly store and sync data across all their Apple devices, and Apple Music, which took on giants like Spotify and changed the way we listen to and experience music. No more Livewire and Num.exe for us. The key to Apple's dominance is how everything works together. Whether you're using a MacBook, iPhone, iPad, or Apple Watch, the integration is so smooth that it feels like all of your devices are speaking the same language. What's fascinating about Apple today is how it's not just a tech company, it's a lifestyle brand. People don't just buy Apple products because they're functional, they buy them because they're a part of a culture. From minimalist designs to sleek marketing, Apple has positioned itself as a symbol of innovation and creativity. So, what are your thoughts on this company and its evolution? Make sure you let us know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in our next episode.